ancient reading from the fable of Scourge, a world where words turn whispers in the air to unleash stories and shadows of days long gone from hell's lair. A world where brothers fight brothers, where blood runs thicker than nightmares, where screams of mortals in war are filled with pain and despair. A world where being thankful is filled with a thirst for blood and taste of flesh. Grimoire! Grimoire! Rise from the depths! Damn these souls to our pages through dying breath! season has been a blast this year and it is that time of the season to do character appreciation month and i am super stoked to have my first guest on for the season miss michaela myers you may know her she is the uh the opening girl for grimoire one of my favorite mazes this season but you've had a long like haunt history going back even before grimoire but we're going to talk a little bit about grimoire today and i want to dive a little bit into your haunt history but uh Michaela how, how has haunt season been for you so far it's been it's been a journey um, it's been really good it's been exciting it's my first year at Knott's and I've been blessed and honored to play Sammy in the grimoire and it's been great I mean besides you know the little bumps in the road along the way it's been awesome I mean like I said grimoire this year was probably one of my favorite mazes of all time and I remember the excitement you had when I when I walked through and and, and got to film the POV with with you in it um, and, and just just going through that maze that was literally a maze that you know when I walked through it I was like this feels like an episode of the Twilight Zone like this really does this this feels awesome like you're going through different time periods in this maze I mean you're you're diving deep into the book of the Green Witch the Grimoire itself which you you actually see as an Easter egg in um, in Origins and, and you're just kind of seeing where this book has gone throughout the years where we pick back up last with the book obviously is going to be uh, throughout the decades, but we see this story mostly takes place in the 80s. Uh, how was that to, to, to bring that character to life and, and to really kind of live that like 80s vibe and stuff? Honestly, um, I was nervous at first because I got the character. I didn't know anything about it because you know how Knott's is. Um, and I, I saw Sammy and at first I was kind of like, oh no, like, I don't know. I've never played a victim character. I've never been a human at a haunt. So I was very nervous, but um, getting to play this character and being in the 80s, which is one of my favorite time periods of like music and stuff, was great. And it is great. And I'm glad to be bringing it to life as best as possible because I know it's the first year, but I think it's great. I was nervous, but honestly, I'm having so much fun with it. I mean, that's all we, you know, we really can do too, you know, is just have some fun. I mean, because that's haunt season comes like what, two months of the year? And I'm glad to see you're having fun with it. I mean, there's been constant uh like memes about certain like movements that you've done in the past which i thought were hilarious and, and um just to see you play this role is really cool i got to actually first see you scare uh last year at castle dark um and that was a lot of fun we had never gone out there and we went out there and we had a blast doing that one uh you gave us some really good footage then you still give us good footage now so it's it's just a an honor to see you guys go out there and do it for the for some reason this year though like i've noticed this across the haunts all across the board that are in socal the energy level is is on a whole new level compared to what was last year and i'm like just super shocked to see how this year has been honestly because it's it's like 2021 was like the soft opening comeback and now 2022 is like let's show them what we have now like how is it feeling like it's especially opening a new maze like how is that energy kind of uh transformed over into that maze and 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 with the rest of the park i mean you see it every single week in these at the park it's just it's an it's amazing so how does that energy transform for you guys in grimoire i would say the energy um i think it's just the excitement of being able to come back and because 2021 was a rough year you know um a lot of haunts weren't getting a lot of um 
people coming in, which was weird because you'd think like after 2020, everyone was super excited to come in, but it was a little slower for me, at least personally, but the energy that um, we have a lot of new people, actually, a lot of first years in our maze, including myself, and we're just all really excited to be a part of Grimoire and opening something so important to Knots, and it's super exciting. So every day we come in, um, whether we're tired and don't even want to be there <laughs> for some people, and we just have a blast, honestly, and I think that for me, I never, I personally am always excited to go in. So for me, the energy is just always there, whether it's doing something kind of stupid, but really funny, or just scaring in general, it's, it's always top tier, at least in Grimoire, I would say we're a very tight knit cast. I mean, like I said, this maze really did a lot for me, at least, you know, I mean, this was probably in my top five walkthroughs of all time for 2022 this year. And, uh, you know, just seeing the, the, the scene transitions from color in the 80s and at a campsite to like you ended up in this house and like black and white. And then you going further into black and white as far as, you know, going into uh, other portions of this house as far as like the dining room, you know, the bedrooms, you know, to see all these different transformations of, of one book, you know, during the war and stuff, which was really cool. And, and to go eventually back to where it all, you know, it all transformed. It was like you opened the book. We're going through flashback memories, and then we go back to present time, and, and all hell is broken loose. And, and this kind of sets an opening. It leaves an opening, obviously. And you, you, like you said, you're a part of something that's going to be pretty big for the next, it seems like for the next coming years at Not Scary Farm, uh, especially next year being the 50th, and them kind of unraveling this story kind of just opened up a new chapter as to what's going to happen with the Ghost Town story, with the Not story overall for the 50th. Um, and, and just to go through that and see that as a fan is nuts. How was it, uh, like, you know, working it as, as a fan, you know, to see all this stuff kind of come to life and then kind of understanding the maze uh, more and more every single night? How is it kind of getting you hyped for the 50th? Honestly, from uh, day one, when we started Scare School, they, John and Gus really broke it down for us, explaining everything about this maze, which was beautiful. We walked through, did our first walkthrough. And they told us the story as we were walking through and they were kind of explaining to us things about, you know, 50th and all that stuff. And it was crazy. I was so hyped to know like what we were actually being a part of and what we were bringing to life. And they did a beautiful job and I'm just so happy to be a part of it. And I think that next year is going to be super big and I'm super excited for that. Uh, I mean, this 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 was easily, like I said, this was a great comeback year for a lot of people. This was a lot of fun, new mazes uh, as you go, expanded storylines on, on scare zones and whatnot, which was really cool. I mean, Goring 20s has really been killing it this year. I've seen all these other scare zones, Carnival, Hollow's final year, they've been killing it out there. Ghost Town is out there killing it. Forsaken Lake's out there killing it. And you you guys and Bloodline are the two new, uh, the new pieces of the puzzle. Uh, so that's been a lot of cool to see, like, what those mazes have become and, and transformed throughout the season as far as like things that got cut or things that are still there. And, and it's cool to see that a lot of the story is still there. I mean, that's one of my favorite things is to every year to see when the maze starts compared to how it finishes. And, you know, I've gone through Grimoire now many times and I've seen where it started to where it's at now. And it's just like every time I've gone through it, it's just gotten better and better. And you guys have upped the game. So thank you guys so much for doing that and bringing this kid's uh, fantasy Twilight Zone maze to life. That's how I've been kind of looking at it because I've wanted a Twilight Zone maze for so long and this is the closest I've gotten so far. So Knott's is hitting all the, the right uh, nails in the coffin, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> it, it's it's been a great season. And uh, now I want to go back a little bit about your backstory coming up into the haunt world. Uh, where did all? What age did it all start for you for your love for Halloween, for haunts? And, and when did you go to your first haunt? Um, it all started actually when I was, for real started when I was eight. Um, my dad, he used to work at Not Scary Farm in the Hollows, or not the Hollows, CS first, and then Ghost Town. Um, and he did a home haunt one day. And I went to a trunk or treat event. And I came home and he pretended to kidnap me because they were doing a home haunt. And that's where it all started. And I worked my first haunt. It's going to sound really bad. I worked my first haunt when I was 10 years old at Scream Kingdom with my dad. Um, he signed a permission slip and everything. And that's where it started. And from there, 
I just worked haunt after haunt with him by my side, um, signing very many permission slips, a lot of release forms, but it was great. And I'm glad. So this will be my, this is my 10th year actually of haunt. And I wouldn't have wanted to spend it any other way. 10 years down the road. Wow. And you've been doing this since you were literally 10 years old. Yeah. Uh, 10 years later, now you're at, you're at, you're opening a maze at Knott's. And that's just, that's got to mean, that's got to mean something, especially your dad coming from Knott's and everything. And, and on your 10th year, you're opening one of the biggest mazes that's going to contribute to the 50 year anniversary story. And many years down the road, people will talk about this one and stuff like how, that. That must be just an, an accomplishment of its own right there, right? Oh, yeah. It's, it means the world to me and it means a lot to my dad too. So that's what's important. Over the years, you said you've gotten a scare with your dad. What, what kind of different roles and, and whatnot would you, you and your dad uh, do together? It sounds like you guys had a really good father-daughter bond. So talk a little bit about that. I mean, tell, it, it kind of shows that it has only strengthened you to get where you're at now. Yeah, so I started as a um, possessed child in a onesie, and he was a doctor. We did asylum maze together, and um, we took those characters actually over to RC Haunt. And we did that for um, the back end of one season. And then we took the same characters over to Coffin Creek. And we did that there. Uh, from there, we did Sinister Point. Um, took the same characters over to Sinister Point. Um, a lot of character, we took the same ones because it just worked so well. And then after that, we ended up um, at 17th Door for a very short amount of time, sadly. And unfortunately, because we had other things that we had to do, it was really far out of our way. But I was playing Paula, and he was, um, I forget what it's called, but it was some sort of, you know, prisoner. Oh, it got dark. Sort of. And I know it's, it's, it's scary. It got spooky in here. It's haunted. <laughs> but um, yeah, we did that. And then after that, it was a lot of possessed child and he played a he was like an all black character with like a bird looking face and um at sinister point at one point um and then i was a possessed child again i think i've always played a possessed child it kind of goes full circle besides at castle dark because now i'm still a possessed child just a human human form of a possessed child so yeah i for me i've basically been a possessed child this whole time i didn't even really think about that until right now Ten years of, of possessing a child. There you go, right there. Possessed child yep. for ten years. I mean, even still, you're getting possessed in Grimoire in the beginning, too. So, I mean. Yeah. Possessed child, yeah. It's like you're getting possessed because you open the book and you're seeing. I mean, what I what I depict it as is you seeing the the stuff that we are about to see once we go through that tent. That's what I predict is happening at that point. I mean, I, there, there's so many people that have walked out of this maze like, what the hell did I just walk through? After going through it so many times, I'm like, dude, this is a clear story of the witch's book and what it's, where it's been throughout the decades and where it's going to end up next year. That's all I've, that's all, that's, I mean, it's simple as that for me, at least. I mean, there's probably more to it than that, but th the simple version is this is a big setup for the 50th and I'm, I'm for it. So, I mean, you know, I mean, that's, it's really cool to see that you've, you've kind of grown your way into now an adult possessed adult <laughs> <laughs> even though i'm still playing a possessed 15 year old child I'm, you know i <laughs> unfortunately uh with my size and stature i guess i'll probably always be a child character which i'm okay with i'm having fun with it as long as i guess <laughs> i get to be possessed then it's great i mean that sounds great so let's talk a little bit about castle dark this is the first event i ever saw you at i, I saw you uh kind of wandering around the streets just having a ball and whatnot uh, talk to me about your time at castle dark like what, what what did you do what things did you do were you there for many years or was that a one and done season uh how was the experience over at castle dark so i started there in 2019 so i was there for three oh wait yeah three years i was there for three years um i was 17 when i started so i was labeled as atmospheric talent but, you know, I still got to do scares and stuff. But I started as the Lady in White. Um, and I stayed as the Lady in White all the way until I finished out the last season with them. And it was great. It was my first experience being on, like, a street position. And um, I got to really, like, rebuild that character. Because I know they'd had it in the past. But this was the first time they really, like, went full force with the haunt. And I got to like create and grow with that character which was really special to me personally because I started with just kind of being gagged I wasn't allowed to talk 
to figuring out how to make being gagged like a whole thing with like screeching and stuff like that. And I found out that I could do that, which I didn't even know I could do that until then. And it was great. I, I miss it a lot. Um, I made a lot of great friends there and a lot of family that actually are now at Knott's with me still. And it was a great experience. I loved playing the Lady in White. It was great. I remember our first interaction with you in 2021. Uh, we were in line for one of the, the, the circus-themed maze at, at, over there, and it was like you coming out and you had some stuff in your mouth that was just dripping out, and I was just laughing so hard at that because like, some other people in front of us were kind of like disgusted by it, and we're over here trying to get our cameras in your face just to get that on, on film while the other people are being disgusted by it. So I just remember having a fun time going. I, I remember you being one of the highlight characters. I think you've been in a couple of my thumbnails for a couple Castle Dark videos. So just to see uh, your character and, and to see how they, they do things over there was a ton of fun. And, and I re we really had a great time last year. We, we, we made the most out of, out of what we had, and, and it was a lot of fun. Um, going on to the 2022 season, you get cast in Grimoire. Um, how was it the audition process for you this season? I know they changed it up a ton um, for, for a lot of people and, and whatnot. It was under a, a new management and whatnot. So it was something different, something new. Everyone was fair game this time around. Uh, how was the audition process for you? Were you very nervous going into it? Or did you think like, man, I think I might got this one in the bag? Honestly, I was super nervous. I didn't know what to expect because I heard that it had changed. It was unlike your regular, like, act like you're in a blender or your body is filling up with razor blades. It was very specific and to the point what they wanted us to portray. And so I was super nervous going in. I remember standing in, like, the little line queue waiting, and I was, like, shaking. And everyone's like, oh, I've been here before. I've worked here before. And I was like, I had no idea what to expect and what to do. And then I was right in the front row with a panel of people, and I was – it made me like so sick to my stomach. But then after walking out, um, I felt like I had nailed it. And then my, I found out my sticker was in my hair, like my number um, had somehow ended up off my clothing and tangled into my hair. And I was like freaked out. I was like, oh no, what if I'm not gonna be casted because my sticker was in my hair. And then uh, Tim was actually there, I think taking measurements. And he was like, no, no, don't worry. We have your picture and your name and your number. You'll be all good. So I walked out with a smile on my face and I was, I felt like I nailed it in the bag. And I think from what I got, I, I nailed it for, for what I was expecting at least. I mean, to be in, in opening a Grimoire, man, that must, that must be awesome. I mean, to open a maze in general must be huge for anybody, um, especially you going with the history of your dad working there and whatnot and then kind of continuing that legacy, which is really cool. Um, so you get the call. You get the email, whatever you got, you got it, and they gave you the green light. You're you're in, not scary farm. But did they tell you where you're in yet? Because they want to keep this new one secretive, or is was it a while until you waited till you got into that role? Like, how did that work with with the new maze? I've never really talked to anyone who's ever opened something like this. So when they gave me the call, they couldn't tell me what location I was in, what the name of the maze was. Um, the only thing she gave me is your name is Sammy. And I was like, okay, um, I don't know what that means, um, like a little girl's name. So I had assumed that I was a possessed child again. I was correct. But um, yeah, they, they just told me that my name was Sammy and they were like, you'll find out more later. And then with our paperwork and stuff, um, we still didn't get the name of the maze, which I believe the, the code name was Chopper. Um, so I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I didn't know we did code names. So I was like, Chopper, that's really interesting. I, I, I don't know what this is, could be about. And um, I didn't know for a very long time. It was like a waiting game of just all I knew is my name was Sammy. And I thought the maze name was called Chopper. I didn't even know what location because, you know, you could see the builds, but didn't know. What <laughs> Man, that, I mean, that, that, that gives me throwback to Devil's Den. 3D, like th just to see those code names and whatnot. That's so much fun. That's, that's that's always a lot of fun to try to figure out what it is, going into it being very secretive and whatnot. Um, then the time comes, they finally release the trailer for the uh, the final maze for Not Scary Farm, which is entitled The Grimoire. 
Um, when you first saw this trailer, where, did you have a ton of questions, and then you kind of did it kind of make a little bit more sense to you now that you knew this was what you were going in, or like how did it work for you? Like, did you already start coming up with things, uh, concepts, and stuff maybe for the character? I was driving and I received like. 10 messages from people saying oh my gosh look at this look at this and and I was like what's happening right now so I pulled over immediately and I watch it and um I see a girl who looks very similar to me her name I believe is Mackenzie and she played that character Sammy in the commercial and I was like I was like oh and then I saw the description and I was like I was like three kids okay and I was like oh that's my character and watching it at first I was very very confused um all I gathered was a book two two three kids and some weird like flashbacks happening and then um I started to like piece it together and I was like okay and I started thinking about like everything that it could be and what it was going to be I didn't know that I would be in the pre-show going into it so I had a lot of ideas but like over time I've been able to like implement those ideas so it was really cool I was very confused at first though I mean, it it was a confusing trailer because I remember even looking at it and being like, what the hell? I, I knew it was going to be 80s themed, but then I knew we'd be doing some time traveling, obviously, with all the scenes that we saw that were black and white and that kind of 80s vibe and whatnot. I think I love what I love most about this maze, too, and you might be getting annoyed by it, but I love it every time, is, is to hear the various uh, 80s tracks that they picked out for this uh for this maze i'm pretty sure you know every lyric by heart at this point because they you know you're hearing them on a nightly basis like probably like six seven hours a night you know it's it's uh it's a booming and and it's a, it's, a, it's definitely a vibe but uh what was it kind of getting the feel of, of to, to to be to put yourself in the 80s did you have to do any did, for you were you watching any movies that were 80s based or did you already have like a, a good knowledge of the 80s that you're like i got this in the bag man i i, I can do this Honestly, I went through, in my sophomore year of high school, I went through a weird 80s phase. Um, I dressed like I was in the 80s. I watched 80s movies, and I listened to 80s music. I don't even know why. I couldn't tell you. So when I found out this was 80s themed, and I saw, like, my costume, and I tried it on for the first time, I was so excited. I, I was like, this is what I wanted in high school, but I, I couldn't do it because, like, budget, and also I had no idea I was wearing random clothes so I was excited and I started um listening to the playlist track after we first opened because um the designer had made a track about it and it's so great like I love the music it does get quite a bit annoying sometimes at the end of the night but each night we go in and we're dancing and we're getting warmed up and it's so much fun but I didn't really have to do much studying because I feel like my sophomore self really jumped out and was really excited honestly I I'm going to miss this role so much. Um, if I got placed back there again, I would not be upset. But I think next year I would, I'm looking at streets and I'm thinking that I want to make my way out there um, with possibly some character ideas. I would love to see what C CS becomes and uh, what that's going to look like. So I would love to be involved in that. Um, or even opening a new maze would be really cool again. Um, but personally, I would love to make my way out to streets and possibly in CS, whatever that is, or even Carnival. I feel like I would have a lot of fun over there. Oh, man. I mean, I think it's just to see where CS is going to go next season. I mean, we don't even know theming yet. I mean, the Hollow was such a great uh, overlay for the last couple of years. Now to see it kind of leave finally, it's going to be a little bit of a heartbreak. But I'm excited to see what new uh, zone comes in that area. To see Pumpkin Eater and Dark Ride leave is going to be very sad, but to see what replaces them is even more exciting. Um, and then to see where you end up uh, in the future as far as uh, opening another uh, historical maze, hopefully, or coming down in the streets and, and, and playing on the streets and see how that, that goes. Because I, I could see, I mean, I've seen what you can do on, on both settings, so I know wherever you end up, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be a good time, and... Uh, we're all here for it. We are all here for it. I think the idea is to uh, hopefully get you. I want to see what you would be like playing with clowns, though. I think you'd be great in Carnival, to be honest with you. I think you can, you can take that adrenaline and that that hype level up to a fifteen, and and roll with it every single night. I, I feel it. Oh yeah, that's where I spent most of my time. And at Dark Castle. Oh, there it goes again. That's kind of scary. There it is. <laughs> 
that's where I spent most of my time at Castle Dark. I was able to roam the whole park, but I always was in the clown zone. I just had so much fun over there. Yeah, I mean, and then to, to take it to a whole new level at, at Not Scary Farm, I mean, I think your dad would be very proud. And uh, oh. that's that's cool. Has he come out to see you this season? I'm pretty sure he has, right? He, has he come down to see you this season? So, unfortunately, <laughs> um, I had family come through. He came through, um, but he went in one minute after we switched with oh. our cast. So, <laughs> he didn't see me. He's going to try to make it through again. But he's very proud. My mom's very proud. I got to see my mom at least. But, um, yeah, he missed it by one minute, unfortunately. By one minute? Yeah. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to your maze manager. He's a good friend of mine. We'll make sure he doesn't miss <laughs> it this time. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't. We'll, we'll pray. <laughs> that's, that's cool, though. Your family came out to support you. That's awesome. I mean, that's really that – that must, that must mean the world to you when, you when you are doing your thing and all of a sudden you're surprised by what you see standing right there and for that – because they have to stand there for a little bit to watch you do your thing, and, and that must be like kind of a break character for like a really split second, and then get back into it moment. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's sometimes it's kind of scary because I can't really see with the lights right there. Um, right. A lot of people came through, and I was like, I didn't see you. The lights are so bright that I can't really see everybody. So, but I saw my mom standing there with her camera out, taking her little pictures, and I was like, I was like, oh, and then I was like, back to reading the book. <laughs> Oh man, that's been—it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I, like I said, I love Grimoire, one of my all-time favorite mazes. Now, I mean, and, and, and they continue to impress me every single year. Not very far. Uh, what they do out there is, is phenomenal, and and whatnot. Now, before your season started, did you get the opportunity to go check out any other SoCal haunts out out here this year? And if so, where'd you go uh, check out? Um, I went to Universal. I believe it was the second night. It was the night that it was just absolutely pouring. But um, it was a lot of fun. Um, I didn't know how I'd feel about the weekend maze, but that was my favorite one by far. I don't know. I thought that was super cool and unique. But I only got to go to um, yeah, I only got to go to Universal. Um, I did get to go. My dad does have a haunt this year over at Dos Lagos, so I did get to go check it out. I didn't get to run it all the way through because it was before the opening. But I got to go and look at it, and it was really awesome. So those were the only two that I really got to check out this season. Oh man, I mean, you went to Universal on a good year too. The Universal was very, very well done this year. I was even surprised by the weekend alone, and I was the biggest hater of that maze, and it yeah. surprised me. It was so, great. I was surprised too. I know, I was very surprised of how it was. Um, now Universal was a great time this year. I, like I said, all the haunts across the board that we've been to thus far have really been like on a whole other level, and it's just been exciting to see what what haunt brings to the table and stuff, and 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 whatnot, and and to see like the new ones open up like Shacktoberfest. I was very much blown away by that. I really was. Like I didn't even see it, but I've heard good things about it. It was it was insane of how good it was. Like but then I and then I knew the talent manager for that and I was like, no wonder why this is good, because I know this talent manager and, and she's gonna do good things. Talking to you, Hunter. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's been a great season and I'm I'm very thankful for everyone that we've gotten to meet that we that we know that we've gotten to see scare and just overall just making this one a memorable one. It's been a lot of fun. It's, it feels good to get back in the seat to do another podcast and it feels good to be doing what we do best in the month of November, which is character appreciation month. You being the lucky number one on the first day of November, uh, Ooh. to kick off the scare actor appreciation month. Um, and I am very happy to be back. I'm happy that we got to finally get you on the show. Um, it was something that I, I've been wanting to do since last season when I saw you at Castle Dark, and now we get to do it this season with Castle Dark, with Knots, and all the other experiences you've gone through uh, in the past uh, to pave your 10-year haunt career now. Uh, and I can't wait to see what happens in the future with you. I mean, as far as where you end up next, um, we're hoping to get you on the Carnival to see you uh, cause chaos out there with, with a lot of the other uh, mischievous clowns that we love um, and we can't wait to see what happens next. I mean, it's always good to, to flip the, the next chapter to see where you end up, where you're going to be and how you make the most of it. Cause it seems like with the small portion of, of, a, of a major role that you've got in Grimoire, you made the most of it and you've made it yours. And I think that you set the tone and, and the, and the style as to how this character should be played in the future. So congratulations. You're even, you're even on the merchandise. Allegedly. <laughs> 
allegedly looks just like me, so might as well be me. Hey, right? You just hook her up <laughs> with the free shirt, Nods. What are we doing? <laughs> Get us some free Grimoire merch. That would be nice. It would be nice. Well, Michaela, I want to thank you so much for, for kicking off Character Appreciation Month, for doing what you do and, and continuing the uh, work and continuing the motto, We Scare Because We Care. I yes, mean, thank you so much. Yes, we, we loved you and Grimoire. Uh, as of this recording, you have still one more weekend uh, of Scary Farm, uh, which is the big weekend, Halloween weekend. So be safe out there. Have a great time and make the most out of this final weekend in your role of Grimoire because you, like I said, you set the tone for that character and now you gotta, you gotta finish it with the bang. Uh, you guys done great all season and, uh, we're, we're so happy to be doing these podcasts to honor all characters across the board, whether you work at Knott's, whether you work at Universal, wherever you work in the world, this is, this month is a dedication to all of you out there for all the hard work and effort that you guys put into bringing these haunts to life, as well as all the people behind the scenes who, who will work, uh, endlessly to bring these haunts to life as well. This month is all for you. So we appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, we got a big, big month ahead of uh, ahead of us for Character Appreciation Month. Lots of great guests, lots of returning guests, lots of new guests. Uh, Michaela being our first guest um, and our first guest for Character Appreciation Month. I mean, whoa. I'm so I'm so like unspoken of words that I just don't even know what to say because I'm that excited. So, um, Michaela, for those who want to follow you, follow your haunt career or anything, do you have any social media they can come uh, look you up on? Yeah, of course. You could follow me at spooky dot um, It would be S P zero zero K Y and then period and then Gigamore, which is G I G A M O R E. <laughs> like spooky dot gigamore. That's that's funny. <laughs> that's really funny that's awesome well uh michaela thank you so much uh for your time uh we really appreciate you getting to know you a little bit more we, we appreciate the world uh now gets to know you a little bit more and and hopefully look out for you next haunt season because uh i feel big things are coming your way so let's see what happens and see where it goes right yep thank you so much it was a blast <laughs> it was it was a big blast so for all those who got to experience not scary farm uh grimoire now uh, a new maze over at Not Scary Farm for the 2022 season, and we'll probably be here for a, a good amount of time. But if you got if you got the pleasure to see Michaela st- scare in the opening scaremony or the opening scene for that maze, you are were in luck. She was one of the one of the. There was two of you, right? Because you guys had two casts for that as well. Uh, yes, there was two of us. There was two of you. So if you got lucky to see either of them or any of that cast in that maze, or just go through that maze in general uh, for the first year, you were in some big time luck and it was such a good one and we can't wait to see it again next year but with all that being said i'm your host anthony you're watching the knights of horror scare actor appreciation month right here on the mindless horror podcast make sure to follow us on all of our socials twitter at knights of horror instagram at the knights of horror tiktok at the knights of horror and we'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode of scare actor appreciation month see you guys well we can't even say see you in the fog anymore because the season is pretty much over See you guys in Krampus's lair. I don't know. That's coming up, right? <laughs>